Jean Dalglave at University College London is joint winner of this year's Brian Mercer Award for Innovation. She and her team have developed software tools that allow multiprocessor chip manufacturers to test for errors. Some of these bugs may lead to subtle differences in output when the same program is run on different processors, a problem particularly associated with concurrent programming. So a sequential program would be a, a sequence or a list of instructions that says um, do this instruction, then that instruction, one step at a time. You exhaust the list, you go through the list one step at a time. And then a concurrent program is going to be many or several such sequential programs put in parallel. So you have a first list of instructions to do by um, a first agent and a second list by a second agent, etc. And um, perhaps these two agents have to communicate with one another because one instruction that the second agent, agent has to do might uh, need or require some information from its neighbor. So you, you write your program in a high-level language such as C++ and for some reason you were working with a, an Intel machine and you change your mind and you want to work with an ARM machine. When you run your compiled program, the transform program, it's not going to necessarily show the same results. Well, we're trying to figure out what these chips actually do so that programmers can use these chips and develop robust applications for them. So if you've learned how to program on an x86 machine and in your first job you get an ARM machine, then you're going to get surprised, I think, yeah. For the last year, I've developed tools that have been able to test these chips, and specifically GPUs or graphics chips. In many cases, we observed they weren't behaving as expected and it led to some very interesting behaviors and um, surprising behaviors. And people who programmed these things, many of them didn't know these sort of things were possible. And so we developed tools that would uh, generate tons of little tests to probe particular uh, bits of the machine. We pretty much hammer the chip with lots of, lots of work to do. And by hammering the chip with lots of work to do, it sort of makes the chip busy and when the chip gets busy is when some of these strange behaviors show up. Okay, so here we have a pony that's been computed on a, on a CPU. So it looks fine, there's no flow in it. But so to write the code that displays the pony, we used a particular algorithm that appears in an NVIDIA endorsed book. So NVIDIA is a, a chip vendor that produces GPUs. The CPU one is, say, an Intel machine or an ARM machine, whereas the other one was an NVIDIA machine. Here, so we computed the same pony again, but stressing the machine to make it exhibit the unexpected behavior that we're after and that we're trying to model. And as you can see, the pony looks all broken. We have, and so here we show the CPU computed one for comparison purposes. These kind of bugs might arise through errors in the protocols of communicating data between two program agents. If we imagine two mice, Jacob and Charlie, representing two agents who are sharing data, or in this case, a piece of cheese. In the first scenario where all goes well, Jacob sends the cheese by truck, which is delivered to the mailbox of Charlie. Jacob then sends a messenger, a canary, to tell Charlie to open his mailbox and take the cheese. In the second case, Jacob again loads the cheese onto the truck, but this time the journey is much slower, and the messenger canary arrives before the cheese has been delivered, and hence Charlie sees nothing when he opens his mailbox. It's, it's all about communication and orchestration, so to speak. When we wrote the first version of that tool, I really thought that we had just reinvented something that they had internally since the 70s. Uh, but it feels that they didn't have this tool. It's really surprising to a lot of people, and including us. So I guess the award will, would help me organize what is, uh, for now, very, very DIY in a more articulate way. We want to use that funding to really work on engineering efforts on these tools and make them very usable in in many environments. I think the, the tool development is going well, but what we could use is um, all the rest in setting up a company, I suppose, because we're just a bunch of academics, so we have absolutely no idea. Investigating uh, patterns and also have like an engineer full-time on the job. Uh, and so if we had 
even one person uh, um, who was working full time on that, uh, that, was, that would be great.